Hello and welcome to the session. In this session we will solve problems involving velocity and other quantities that can be represented by vectors. Let us start with magnitude and direction of vectors. Now suppose we have position vector V in the coordinate plane with initial point at origin having components given by order pair x, y. So, x is horizontal component and y is vertical component. Let theta be the positive angle between the x-axis and the vector v measured in anti-clockwise direction. Now this angle theta will give us direction of vector v. Now see, this is a right angle triangle with hypotenuse magnitude of vector v. Let this triangle be triangle O, B, C. So, O, C is equal to magnitude of vector v. Thus, Direction of the vector is given by tan theta is equal to perpendicular upon base. Now perpendicular is y and base is x. So tan theta is equal to y upon x. Where x is not equal to 0. And applying Pythagoras theorem in this triangle, we have magnitude of vector v is equal to square root of x square plus y square. Now if we know the angle theta, then we can find the horizontal and the vertical components of the vector using trigonometric ratios. Now we know that sine theta is equal to perpendicular upon hypotenuse. So in this triangle we have sin theta is equal to y upon magnitude of v and from this we obtain the vertical distance y is equal to magnitude of v into sin theta and cos theta is equal to x upon magnitude of v from this we obtain the horizontal distance x that is equal to magnitude of v into cos theta. So coordinates of this terminal point C will be magnitude of V cos theta that is magnitude of V into cos theta and magnitude of V into sin theta. Thus the horizontal component X is equal to magnitude of v into cos theta and vertical component y is equal to magnitude of v into sin theta. Now before starting velocity problems of vector, let us understand meaning of true bearing. Now in displacement problems, direction of a vector needs to be found. Now one way to measure the direction of travel is to use true bearings now, true bearing is a measurement of a clockwise angle from the true north direction. Now let us understand velocity vector and its components. Now, a vector that represents the direction and speed of an object in motion is called velocity vector. For example, an aircraft is flying on a bearing of 65 degrees at 5 million miles per hour. Find the components of the velocity of the airplane. Now first of all let us draw its diagram. Now we have four directions north, south, east and west. 
Now we have given that a plane is flying at a bearing of 65 degrees and we know that the true bearing is a measurement of a clockwise angle from the true north direction. So from north direction moving in clockwise direction by 65 degrees we get vector V which is the velocity vector now the angle it makes with horizontal axis is 90 degrees minus 65 degrees that is equal to 25 degrees. Here in direction horizontal component of velocity will be in east direction and vertical component is in north direction. Let V be the velocity of the airplane a bearing of 65 degrees is equivalent to a direction angle of 25 degrees now according to business formula is magnitude of V so magnitude of V is equal to 500 now we know that horizontal component X is equal to magnitude of V into cos theta and vertical component y is equal to magnitude of v into sine theta. Now here we have theta is equal to 25 degrees and magnitude of v is equal to 500. So horizontal component of vector v is equal to 500 into cos of 25 degrees and vertical component of vector V is equal to 500 into sine of 25 degrees. So the velocity components are given by the ordered pair 500 into cos 25 degrees 500 into sine 25 degrees which is approximately equal to the ordered pair 453.15 211.31 Now the components of the velocity give the eastward and northward speeds that is airplane travels about 453.15 miles per hour eastward and about 211.31 miles per hour northward as it travels at 500 miles per hour on a bearing of 65 degrees. Now let us discuss force components. Now we can use vectors in finding the components of a force exerted on a body. Now let us discuss an example. A wagon is being pulled by a rope that makes a 25 degrees angle with the ground. The person is pulling with a force of 103 newtons along the rope. Determine the horizontal and vertical components of the vector. Now here we want to find the components of 103 newtons vector. So we basically need to draw a triangle and then solve for the unknown sides the triangle will be drawn using the force vector from above along with horizontal and vertical components now see this diagram we have a wagon and a rope at an angle of 25 degrees with horizontal line that is ground so this will be the horizontal component of force which is denoted by fx and this will be the vertical component of force that is denoted by fy now we have vector f whose magnitude is 103 newtons so magnitude of vector f is equal to 103 and angle theta is equal to 25 degrees so using component form of vector we have horizontal component of force that is fx is equal to magnitude of f into cos theta and vertical component 
एफ वाई इज इक्वल टू मैग्नीट्यूड ऑफ एफ इन टू साइन थीटा सो एफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू वन हंड्रेड थ्री इन टू कॉस ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्रीज विच इज इक्वल टू नाइन्टी थ्री पॉइंट थ्री फोर एंड एफ वाई इज इक्वल टू वन हंड्रेड थ्री इंटू साइन ऑफ ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्रीज विच इज इक्वल Thus, horizontal component of force that is F S is approximately equal to 93 newtons, and vertical component of force that is F Y is approximately equal to 44 newtons. Now, if a right angle triangle is not found, then we can make use of laws of sine and cosine in finding the magnitude and direction. So in this session we have discussed how to solve problems involving velocity and other quantities that can be represented by vectors and this completes our session hope you all have enjoyed the session